And Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. You see how that goes? He is the Word. So when you're holding this Bible in your hands, you're holding Jesus. He's going to reveal himself to us like he's just like never before. He just loves to do it. And David says, he says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I will not sin against you. So we hide God's word in our heart. It helps us get through life. It says, how can a young man keep his way pure? You know how? By living according to the word of God. That's how. Those scriptures are not up there, but there's so many. If you just Google the word, word of God, you'll get so many scriptures of the word you can stand on. Because the Bible also says when we stand in his word, I just said we will not be disappointed, right? The word heals. You know what else the word does? Heals. You know that precious sister right here. The Bible says he said his word and healed all of them, all of our diseases. He heals. You, you speak the word, you stand in the word, you can do the word, you can act according to the word, you can you can stand in the word and, and say, I am not gonna be moved or shaken because no matter what happens, the outcome is always God's word will prevail. God's word is in control. So today, I want to tell you, precious ones, everyone in here, all the dear ones, and everyone connected to you, all of your family, stand on the word for them. Stand on the word. Read the Bible daily. Stand on it because, you know, Paul says, let the word of God dwell richly in you. That's what my prayer is for each one of us. Let the word of God dwell richly in each one of us. Jesus says, if you remain in me, and my words remain in you. Ask whatever you want, and it will be given to you according to his word, right? So today we're about to partake. We're going to go. This is our protection. This is the meal that heals. This is what the Lord says. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have fellowship with me. You remain in me. You became, you become one with me. So today, let's take our bread. Let's take it out. Let's bless it. Let's bless it together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. And you know what? Who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. And this is what we we're about to celebrate. The cross of Jesus Christ. The fact that he died for us. The fact that he gave everything for us. He says, it is finished. So your healing is finished. So everything that he's done for you, you can stand on it because he said it is finished in his word. He says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. That joy that was set before him was you, every one of us here, and me. We were the joy. He did it for us. So the joy that was set before us, he endured the cross. So let's lift the bread to Jesus. Let's lift it to him and thank him for that. Thank him that he loves you so much. Oh, how he loves you. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He's the light in the darkness. There is no one like him. So we thank you, Lord, for, for breaking your body for us giving us everything so we can have everything, so we can have eternal life, because the word says heaven and earth will pass away, but your word remains forever, your word endures forever, thank you Jesus for your word, thank you that today we can stand on it, thank you that today we can be comforted, we can find our guidance, path, protection, you are our redeemer, you are our restorer, you are a refresher, your word refreshes, Thank you, Lord. Your word will not return void. Whatever we say and speak from your word will return and do what it says. That's what your word says. We're standing on that word today. Thank you, Jesus, for your, for your body. And as we receive this, as it touches our mouth, we're believing for miracles. We're believing for all the promises that we can have. Thank you, Jesus. Let's receive it together. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Then he took the cup. This is the blood of Jesus. This represents the blood of Jesus. This is our protection. We've been doing this every week after week. We've been doing it at home. And let me tell you what, this is the, this is the meal that protects you. You can stand on it because Jesus said, as often as you do it, do this in remembrance of me. When you remember everything that Jesus did for you, there is no way, there is no way, no how, that you will not be protected, that he will not do what his word says it will do. So let's bless this cup. Let's thank you for this blood. Jesus, we thank you for your blood. Jesus, we thank you that you died for us. We thank you that you were buried for us. And we thank you that you resurrected. And we thank you that you shed your blood in seven different places for every area of our lives we can have. All that you did for us to have because you said it is finished. The veil was torn. We now have that mercy seat. We can run to boldly and approach your throne room. 
and receive all that we need today. Jesus, we thank you for this blood as we're about to take it. Lord, let it be a blessing for every person in this house today. In the name of Jesus, receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we all stand up and give him glory one more time and worship him? Let's worship him. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, he's worthy. He's worthy. Yeah.
needs prayer. We need prayer. The only thing that will sustain your life is prayer. If my people call by his name, will humble himself. That means you get into a prayer position. Now the Lord forgive us our iniquities. Forgive us our sins. He will show up. He will heal his land. He will do things you've never seen before. Father, we just thank you so very much for coming for you to come today with thanksgiving. We're not coming to ask you, but we come to thank you. We thank you for being such a good father for us. Such a good father in all our areas of life. You are the one that takes care of us. And so we thank you that we can lift up our voices unto you. We pray this, we pray this country and the nation of the world before you come. We thank you for what's coming out from your glory, the manifestation of your presence we've never seen before. Thank you, Lord, for you're so wonderful. And I pray that every heart will open up unto you. That we devour the things of God. That our love, that our love for you will grow strong every day. We thank you that we can speak in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are one by ourselves, 
in a relation with God. I want to say before 2000, you were able to pick it back to somebody in your faith, but time has changed. The Bible says, if the Lord God will not shorten the time, no one on earth will ever make the glory. No one. And we see how time flies by. I'm glad I'm at the age I'm at. I'm glad, hallelujah, I don't be 30 or 20, no. I'm glad I'm past 50 because I know my home going to be a glorious home going before I go into glory. God's going to shake his world for his glory. Hallelujah. And I'll be part of it. And I want all of us to be part of it. You families, you loved ones, God has no limits. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it happens. Because you don't see it, you don't be, it doesn't mean it doesn't activate it. And that's why I want you to walk close with the Lord every day. Spend time with Him this month of October. Fast. Get ready. I know fasting sometimes can be hard when you see food around you. And if you break one day, don't feel no regret. You don't want to, you don't want to break it. You don't you know, break fast purposely, but just move on to the next one. Move on to the next day. But fast. Fast breaks down the flesh. And the flesh desires to shift in your life. It's a shift in the atmosphere. And you're shifting in the presence of God you have never had before. And God is going to be able to use you like He's never used before. The Lord promised my heart for the next eight weeks we're going to speak about the Holy Spirit. Some people call it it. it, it, it uh, it's not it. The Holy Spirit is God Himself. Amen. He's part of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they're all one. Sometimes you better understand, you gotta comprehend, you gotta explain, but it doesn't matter. If you gotta explain, it doesn't matter. Because the word of God can always explain, but you just believe it. You believe it what it says. Because it will always show the truth. It will always confirm itself. Hallelujah. Church, if you would if you would feel what I feel. If you can see what I see. Just talk to the Lord. Just talk to Him. Talk to the Lord is just conversation. Tell Him you're alone. Tell Him I'm so glad He's here. Just tell Him right now. Tell Him. Talk to Him right now. He wants to hear your voice right now. Sometimes he doesn't hear your voice for weeks. Can you say, Lord, I love you? Everybody, can you say, Lord, I love you? He loves you. He went on the cross for you. He did everything he can do for you. Father, we just worship you. We thank you. We thank you that you've chosen everyone on earth to be a child of God. And God, I pray that everyone that's on earth would make a decision for you to be the Lord of their lives. I thank you that we can walk with you every day. Let's fall more and more in love with you every day, Lord Jesus. Let us become what you want us to be. Holy Spirit, this is your time with us. It's not about people, individuals, it's about you. Because you're the one that transforms us. You're the one that empowers us. And Father, I think that we can surrender this church unto you. And everybody that's attached to somebody in church is around unto you. By the authority of Jesus Christ, I release salvation over everyone's life. Over everyone's life, the family. Oh, God, I release salvation over neighborhoods, over towns, over this country, over the world. Glory, hallelujah. There's no one like you. 
Now thank you for saving us. For saving us and giving us eternity with you. For we all are going to go to hell, but you came and you paid a price for us to go to be with you in eternity one day. The Holy Spirit, I ask you as we hear your word. Deliver it unto us. I'm just a vessel. And the words that come out of my mouth be the words that you want us to hear. Nothing more, nothing less, but exactly what you want us to hear. Now thank you that we can receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Syria title, Why is there a need for the Holy Spirit like they before? It's almost the time we shift in. It's almost impossible to live our life without the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's almost impossible to walk and function our own anymore. Because we need to show direction every day. Direction what we need to do. Direction which way to go. Direction how to deal with things. And so there's a need for us to be united with the Holy Spirit. There's a need for us to be anchored in the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus and God are sitting there on in eternity and glory. Amen. But the Holy Spirit is here from day one. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, He is here on earth. Amen. He is here to intercede for you. Understand when you call in the name of the Lord God Almighty, He intercedes for you. And Jesus intercedes for you in glory next to the Father. What is there He cannot do for you? Now I want to speak of today's, today's sermon title, How Does the Holy Spirit Change Your Life? Like I said, he's not an it. He is a he. He is a person. And how does it, it how does it benefit me to have him in my life? Well, it's very important to understand the Holy Spirit wants to change your life. The Holy Spirit is a life changer, amen. The Holy Spirit, he wants to change your life and let him change your life. Because God has a plan to transform you. The Holy Spirit wants to produce the Christ-likeness that we need to become. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can produce the Christ-likeness that we need to become. His responsibility on earth is to take you and shape you and form you in the likeness of Jesus Christ. That you talk like Jesus. That you look like Jesus. That you walk like Jesus. That you touch like Jesus. When you touch somebody, hallelujah. There's power coming out of you and touching the person. Jesus wants all of his children to be like him. That process that we need the Holy Spirit to for, for us to become is sanctification. He takes us out of our own self. Out of our own, our own egoistic uh, 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 behavior and things we want to have for us and he transforms us and shapes us in a way where we just love people. We don't care how they are towards us. We don't care what they do to us. We just love them with the love of God. Hallelujah. And sanctification is taking the sinner in the blood washed salvation of Jesus Christ and puts him in the family of God and the Holy Spirit transforms that sinner that was saved by the grace of God into a person that is benefiting the kingdom of God and building the kingdom of kingdom of God. Hallelujah. See, you don't get to heaven because of works. You get to heaven because of the grace of God. If we be works for works, there will be no need for the grace of God. But the Holy Spirit changes us and transforms us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, it says, The Lord's glory, for the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Hallelujah. People are bound by sickness. People are bound by demonic. People are bound by oppression. People are bound by, by all kinds of things of life. But I'm telling you today, if somebody's name is Jesus Christ, He'll set you free of every hurt, every pain, every disappointment. He sets you free. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 18 says, So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. What a, what a gift of God. That our eyes have been opened up. We can see the glory of God. We can enter the courts of praise. 
We can come into the Holy of Holies. We take it very rightly. Because never before Jesus, before Jesus came on this earth, never before Jesus walked on the earth was it, was it available for us to enter his glory. But when Jesus Christ, hallelujah, when he died on the cross, the curtain ripped in two, and the glory of God was given to everybody. You can walk in the presence of God, you can come to the throne of God, and God, my Father, I'm here today, and I want to talk to you. You know my life. You know what needs to be changed. Go oh, transform me into a vessel of your holiness. Transform me into a vessel that can keep anointing. Some people in the church, they have secret sins. They do secret things in the secret times of their life. Yet they don't know all the secret sins which holds in their bodies. There's holes in their bodies. When God pours out His glory and His anointing, it just flows through the body and it goes out of the holes. The body can contain the glory of God. The body can contain the love of God. Hallelujah. That's why we need to separate ourselves from what is sinful and become the vessel God wants us to be. Because only the Holy Spirit has the power to change us. You can't change on your own. I can't change on my own. We can reproduce the characteristics of Christ. Only the Holy Spirit can transform us. And the likeness of Christ is not produced by imitation. Some people try to imitate God. They may know the word of God. They may do all things according to the way it's supposed to be. But imitation, God does not want us to be imitator. He wants us to be inhabitators. Amen. You become part of his body. You become part of his power. You become part of his anointing. Hallelujah. Don't be a spectator, be a participator in what's coming. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The same miracle life changed there is available today for us. The Holy Spirit wanted to change your life. He wanted to change my life. And 2 Timothy 1 7 says, It is the Spirit, it is the Spirit, not of fear. Fear is a demonic power. If you get into fear, that fear will destroy you. It's a, it's a demon. The Bible says that fear is a demonic force. And how many people in the church, they in a demonic force of fear. Fear has nothing to do with God. Because when we have fear, we don't trust God. When we have fear, we don't understand. We say, God, how, you don't know how to run my life. You don't dare for me. But yet, the, He is the Almighty. He is the ever-present, all-knowing, ever-powerful God. Hallelujah. There's no one like Him because His presence is with you at the same time. Like He's over in China at the same time or wherever in the world. His presence is the same at every given, any given time. You're never alone. So he's not giving us a fear. When you hear bad report, what comes to the mind is a fear because the enemy only can attack your mind. The enemy can only come to your mind. He wants to plant a seed in your mind. And because he wants to plant a seed in your mind, he wants to, he wants to control your whole entire being. That's why the word of God says, if a thought comes to your mind, hold it captive. Bring it under the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Fear is of the Lord. And he's raising up a church that's fearless. He's raising up a church that's selling out for God. That's selling out for the Holy Spirit. He's raising up a church that transforms everything. Hallelujah. It is a spirit not of fear, but of what? But of power. Hallelujah. I have said many times before, God has no power. He is the power. He is the power that's why nobody can take away from him. He's the source of power. He is power in any given area of your life. If he is power, what can anybody do to you? But he wants us to live by the love he gives us. In the psalm line, whatever your faith understand, you are not. It's not you that dealing with, it's the power that dealing with, and God never lost the battle. The Bible goes so far and Bible says, the battle is not yours. Don't fight the battle that's not yours. Whatever you face in life, it's a battle. Don't, don't 
don't, don't take control of the battle. It's on yours. You give the Lord. You say, God, my Father, I thank you. There's something coming against me. But I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. You change me, transform me in the likeness of your Son, Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to be the one I want to be for your glory. I want to just become what you want to be. And I don't have time to fight a battle. I thank you. They can hand it to you. And I give you praise. Hallelujah. You start praising him for what he's doing, right? When you praise him, you move God. You may say, well, God, why would God be moved by my praise? You know the story of Stephen. Stephen was just a normal man. In the book of Acts, he just did normal things. And he was helping out wherever he can. And one day, some people brought some bad reports of lie against him. And as you cut the story short, it's told to him. Before he died, he said, God, forgive them for what they do. And Jesus, Jesus rose up next to the Father. He was standing next to the Father and received Stephen into glory. Your impact on earth has a great result in heaven. Your life that you demonstrated with God impacts God in glory. The everlasting God. The Bible says, the earth is the footstool for his feet. How big of a God is he? We cannot comprehend how big of a God is he. And yet we're here, we want to struggle, we want to fight our own battles. While he says, give me your battle, I'm going to show you who I am. And all he wants us to just love people. Love people. Just love people, amen. If people do something against you, Love anyhow. The Bible says, see some things you don't understand. The Bible says, pray for your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Hallelujah. My first point is, God through the Spirit gives us meaning. He gives us meaning. God through the Spirit gives us meaning. What is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of life? What if you live here on earth next amount of years and you die and you go to hell? Was it worth living here on earth? The Bible says it would be better for you never be born on earth than be any other hell. What is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is for us to walk in the pathway that God has given unto us. You know, you, know, you, know, you need to understand that Jesus Christ, before he came ever on this earth, before the world was ever formed, your life, everyone's life, and everyone's walk on earth is already written before the foundation of this world. Every life has been written out in perfection before the foundation of the world. Think about it for a second. We have 7.7 7 billion people in the earth. It's just right now. It's saying in this world, in this, in this whole entire span of this world, uh, of this earth, since the beginning of Adam, there's about 110 billion people that came through this world. And yet, God has written out every life for every individual. And he says, if you walk according to my plan, if you walk according to what I have written out before you, and you just walk and journey on the blueprint that I have laid out before you, because the Bible says his plan is wonderful, his plan is good, his plan is prosperous, his plan for you is to be living well, his plan for you is to be healthy, you know, his plan for you is to live a long life, you can just walk on the plan that God has given you, hallelujah, without being sidetracked, you rejoice and dance in his presence every day. Hallelujah. But because we don't see it, because we sometimes don't have the faith to see it, we get off the path. But the Holy Spirit gives us the meaning. What is the meaning? Ask yourself today, what is the meaning for my life here on earth? What's the purpose of me being here on earth? What is the purpose for God to put me on earth? So I can do things that want to do, things I want to do? No, to live for His glory, to point people to Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit gives us guidance. Sometimes we don't know how to deal with situations. If you don't know how to, how to deal with situations, why don't you just pray before God? And wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Amen. Don't rush into something. 
Wait upon the Lord. And comfort. He gives you comfort. And He's going to give you a sound mind. The Word of God, if you go into the Word of God, you, you, you like, like we said before, if you just meditate in the Word of God, you just love the Word and take it with you. You can never go wrong. He gives you sound mind. He gives you inspiration. He gives you knowledge. He gives you information. He gives you insight. The Bible says, God does not do anything in Amos without first releasing it to His prophets. He first lets you know what's going on before He releases it into the world. But what we have to do, we have to live in relation with God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But as it is written, Hallelujah. No eye has ever seen. I saw some beautiful things in my life. And some people have beautiful things. But praise God, what's coming, no eye has ever seen. Have you seen beautiful things on earth? Beautiful vacation, places, beautiful cars, homes, you name it. Beautiful things. But God is telling us today, if we allow the Holy Spirit to direct us in the way He wants us to be directed, then we're going to see things we have never seen before. No ear has ever heard. No, nor have entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah. And that doesn't speak only about the future. It speaks about tomorrow. Because you're always one step away from glory. You're always one step away from breakthrough. You're always one step away from the glory of Christ being demonstrated in your life. The glory of God makes it happen. But we have to be a temple of the Holy Spirit in order for us to understand and see. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 it says, But it was to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. But it was to us See, then he gave you see the love of God. Why would he walk us into the plan? Why would he walk us into his, his world? Why would he walk us into what's coming and how to prepare ourselves? Why would he reveal anything, anything to us? Who are we? But he reveals it to us by, by what? By his spirit. His spirit is on earth. The only revelation you can have is the Holy Spirit. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us the God's deep secrets. Hallelujah. Not everybody can see a secret. See the coronavirus that hit this world? I was foretold by many people in the church before it ever came. They didn't know the name, but they know that God took the whole world on all stop. And rearrange things and make the church understand it's time for the church to wake up. And Matthew talks about ten virgins, five foolish, five, five wise virgins. That's a church. And I made up my mind I will not be the foolish part. I will be the wise part. Amen. I will do whatever I can do to walk with Christ and get my life into Christ the way He wants me to become a be. And God shows us his deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except the person's own spirit. You can know your thoughts. Nobody can. I can read your thoughts. You can read my thoughts. Only you can read your thoughts. But also, and no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. So if we have the Holy Spirit in us, it opens up our thought life onto God. Amen. And we can see what God is all about. We can see what God is doing. We can see what is going on and what's coming because God is revealing it to us by His Spirit. That's why we have to have the Spirit of God in us. That's why we have to be the best that He wants us to be. It 
If you look at Paul in the book of Acts, well, let's go to, to the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 14. It says, by the natural man, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For their foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they're spiritually discerned. Pastor Paul, before his, before his conversion, he was called Saul. He thought he was doing the right things. He was a Christian that wanted to move the kingdom of God. And he went to persecute Christians. He went to kill Christians. He was there when they stoned Stephen. He was, a he, he was there testified to his death. He was a man eager to move the kingdom of God, but he had blinded eyes. Amen. He did not see what he's supposed to see. And sometimes people in church, they do things. They're not benefiting the kingdom of God, but they bring destruction to the kingdom of God. But one day Saul, he thought, I'm going to move my, the kingdom. I'm going to go out because Saul didn't live by grace. He lived by the law. He was instructed by the law. He knew the law. He knew the law. He was living by the law. And he went out and he said, I'm going to do another, uh, another strike to, the, to those horrible Christians. He was riding, and all of a sudden he was riding to Damascus, and, and all of a sudden the law, a strong light hit him. You may say, well, it was just a sun ray. Maybe the sun was just beating too hard at him. But the sun ray, whatever you want to call that light, the light was the light of God. It struck him blind for three days. And the people around him, they say, Saul, what is wrong with you? What, do, what happens to you? What is going on? And Saul said, I'm blind. I don't know what to do. See, God will always show you what's going on. And so Paul here was blinded. And thank God, and nice. He listened to the voice of God because God told him, there's a man coming to you. Go get him. His name is Saul. And I first said, I don't have nothing to do with that man. He's going to kill me. He's, he's going after Christians. He's persecuting. He's killing Christians. I don't have nothing to do. It's just like a lamb. Saul came to Ananias' home. After three days, he restored his sight. The Lord restored his sight. And so, foolishness is known to people without Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, it says, But we, but we, he had stated, of those who have Christ's Spirit living in them, have the mind of Christ. The purpose for you to have the Holy Spirit in your life, in the fullness of His, of his presence, and be baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit, is for you to have one thing, to have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is priceless. Why would God give us the mind of Christ? And so we need to understand, it says here, we have the mind of Christ. The Holy Spirit imparts in the hearts and minds the very nature of God. Hallelujah. Why would we, well, I, I, I can't comprehend, I can't explain, but why would God give His nature into our bodies? Who are we that we qualify for the nature of God to come into our bodies and take over our lives? And direct us in ways we have never seen before. Who are we? It is because of the love of Jesus Christ for us. It's only because of his love. In Romans 8 27 it says, It comes through God the Father and Christ living us through the Spirit. It comes how? It comes through God the Father and Christ living in us through the Spirit. We have to have a relationship with the Father and Jesus Christ. The only way to glory, the only way to heaven, the only way to the Father is to one. His name is Jesus Christ. There's no other door. There's no one else that can enter, that, 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 that can enter into glory. The only way you can enter into glory, into the heavens, and talk to the Father is Jesus Christ. You don't need a priest. You need a pastor. You need anybody. You can go directly into the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for what He has done. Thank God. And so He connects us to the Holy Spirit. When the mind of Christ, when He takes us in our life, He connects us with the Trinity. And all of a sudden, we are part of the Trinity. 
All of a sudden we depart. We, 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 we go we, 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 we in the presence of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It will surely change your life. It will surely make things happen in your life that you have no control over. Why? Because you are in a presence that has never happened to your life before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. And St. Peter 1 prays that His divine power has been given to us all things that pertains to life. If you don't have all things in life, it's not God's fault. If you have all things in life, it's not God's fault. It's your fault. It's my fault. Because His divine power opens up the door unto us that we have everything that pertains to life. And sometimes too much in life is no good. When you have too much clothes hanging in your closet, what happens? Every so often you have to go through and see what you want to get rid of. When you're stuck in your house, every so often you have to rearrange and clean up the house. Simplicity sometimes is a lot better than having a lot of things. Amen? Yeah. Having many cars means you have to worry about folks in many cars. Oil changes, repairs, this. One car is enough. One house is enough. Unless you're somebody who takes care of everything. But simplicity is a blessing. Amen? Apostle Paul says, I'm content. With much, I'm content with little. Our attitude has to be, we're content with what we have, amen. Because if God wants to give you more, nobody's going to understand the way for you to receive more. His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness to the knowledge of Him who called us by His glory and virtue. Oh, praise God. All I need is Jesus. All I need, all I need is to have the mind of Christ. All I need is to have the Holy Spirit in me. That's all I need, amen. Because when I have the Holy Spirit in me and I have a relationship with Jesus Christ, they can call God my daddy. I have more than anybody else can have on earth. I have the completeness of life. My life is just the beginning here on earth. I'm never going to die. I'll tell you, I'm never going to die. When this body closes the eyes and my last breath leaves, I'm not going to die. I'm going to shift into glory. Hallelujah. To be united with the Father and more. A reunification with my loved ones that have gone before me. I praise God. Hallelujah for what's coming. Thank you, Jesus, for His giving us a hope. His giving us glory. Pastor Paul says for me to live. It's okay. But for me to die is a gain, amen. amen. We gain. We never lose. We always gain. As a child of God, you never lose. You always gain. You always get to better things. You always advance. Number three. Through the Holy Spirit living in us, we become the children of God. And what is greater than to be a child of God? In Romans 8, 14, 15, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For all who are what? Led by the Spirit of God. There are many people out there that say they're children of God. You can have a relationship with God and be a child of God, but if you're led by the Holy Spirit, you are below what God has ordained for you. You walk in a walk that God never has approved of or instructed for you to walk in. Because if you're led by the Spirit, see, the Holy Spirit speaks to us. The Holy Spirit gives us insight. The Holy Spirit lets us know what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and how to march forward. God made it so easy. He says, I'm going to give you my Spirit. As long as you yield to my Spirit, He will instruct you and guide you, and you will be just like Him. 
so that you have not received the spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Again, fearful. We're not fearful. We have no fear, amen. Because if my God, who sits on the throne of heaven, can direct every universe, everything out there with the Bible that the whole universe hands between his two hands, he can shake his two hands and the, those planets and the solar systems run with thousands of miles or light years or whatever you want to call it. They spin around and nothing happens. Hallelujah. What is there too big or too small for my God to do for me? He holds everything in his hand. Instead, you receive God's Spirit when He adopted you as His own children. Now we can call Him Daddy. Hallelujah. We can call Him Abba. We can call Him Daddy. Hallelujah. I know when my girls call me Daddy, I say, What you want, you have it. I'll get it. I'm going to give it to you. When the boys say, Dad, I, you know, Dad is like, Okay, what, what do you want? Or when my girls call me Daddy, I say, Whatever you want. It's taken care of. Can you imagine God when you call him daddy? The Israelites never can call God daddy. They were never allowed to call. They were too fearful to call the almighty God, God uh, daddy. They call him Jehovah. And yet we can call him daddy. That means we have an intimate relationship with him. That means we can share our thoughts, our life, our hearts, our heartaches. Our headaches, everything we share with him. We can come and just trust him. Say, Daddy, you know how I feel. You know what's going on in my life. Daddy, I'm so glad I can approach you because I have no one on earth I can talk to. Because no one on earth probably will be able to help me, but I know I can come to you and talk to you. What a privilege. What a privilege to come to God. In John 14, 15, it says, Jesus told his followers, If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. To love God is to obey God. Now I'm glad God got rid of the Ten Commandments because both of you, most of us, probably wouldn't be able to. You may can say Ten Commandments by heart from one to ten, but who can say it from ten to one? The other way around, most of us would not be able to say it in verse. See, God knew. And out of the Ten Commandments, you know, out of the Ten Commandments, they made over 600 laws in the Jewish, uh, uh, the, in, in, in the Old Testament, the Jewish made Over 600 laws. Do you know, the, the, you know the United States took the Ten Commandments and made over 3 million laws out of the Ten Commandments? Of course, that's why everybody's confused. But God knew that two would be enough for us to remember. And those two are the two who say, love the Lord your God first with all of, what, with all of your being. Love Him. And the second one is, love your neighbor as yourself. The Holy Spirit is setting you up for some greatness. He has a plan for you. Is a plan for you. For you to become great. He wants, he, he, he wants to show off his children. And there will come a time, and I think we've entered a time. Because even before the beginning of the year, I, I remember so clearly as I stand here, the Lord says, something great is going to happen this year. But I also know it was the virus. Something great is going to happen. Hallelujah. He has a plan for you. But the only way you can get into the plan of the Lord God is for you to get into His presence. To walk hand in hand with Him. Because to love God is to obey, obey God. In Romans 8, 16 and 17, it says, The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. See, God's Spirit, see, when, when you talk to someone sometimes, you connect right away. Because why? Because your spirit bears uh, witness with that spirit. And it says that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so, be that we suffer with Him, 
that we may also glorify glorify together. Hallelujah. Whatever you go through in life here on earth is nothing compared to where you're going. What you encounter on earth is nothing compared to where God's going to take you to. But God wants you to get ready. God has a wonderful plan for your life. He just laid out the 45 days of the world. Maybe you didn't know the plan for your life. But you still can call on the name of the Lord God Almighty. He will instruct you. He will let you know what plan there is for your life. And I want to ask you a quick question. It's a very important question. If you die this very second, do you know that we are a shadow of a doubt that you're going to be with Him in glory? Eternity is too long for us not to know where to go. Sometimes we think we've all the time in the world. There's a Bible story where this rich man, he, had, he was a big farmer. He says, I'm going to build myself another a farm. Now I'm going to expand my farm. Now I'm going to be wealthy than ever before. The Bible says he didn't know that that night. It would be over with his life. But he didn't have to go into tomorrow. Not knowing where he's going. I know, I know, I know we had to shut the doubt. If I die, I'm going to go to the Lord. There's no one out of it or not. I know. And we have to know. And no one, no one, no one qualifies to go to heaven on their own. Because the Bible says that all have sinned. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us. There's not one righteous. Even Jesus, he was righteous. But our sin separated from the Father. Can you imagine that? The righteous Jesus had been separated from the Father because of our sins. And Jesus, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because of us. And the wages of sin, the Bible says, is eternal damnation away from God. But I like the next one, hallelujah. The Bible says, who, whosoever, whosoever believes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. It doesn't take much to believe. Amen? It's so easy. God makes it so easy. It doesn't cost us any money. It doesn't cost us anything. All we have to do is just Accept him as a Lord and Savior. We are whosoever. But don't wait for the last breath of your life to accept Jesus. Some people that just slip into glory the last minute of their life, but they have nothing to show for them in heaven. Everything you do in the kingdom of God, your reward is stored in heaven. Where moth cannot destroy, where thief cannot break in. Amen. And so I want to ask you today if you want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you don't know Jesus, the Lord and Savior, you want to have a relationship with Him and end the path together, I want you to lift your hands. God loves you. God wants to empower you. Now I want to listen. I want to leave you in a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you just the way I am. Cleanse me with your precious blood. Wash me and make me whole. I accept you as the Lord of my life. I believe my heart then that without you, I cannot exist. And Lord Jesus, I confess that I trespass against you. But this day is a new day of mercy. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give me boldness to speak the word of God to all the ones around me. 
I know, Lord Jesus, that you turned back for me. And give me boldness to live in the name of Jesus and fill with the Holy Spirit. Impart into my life the things of glory. Now receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory and praise now be given to you. Hallelujah. Thank you.